All right, welcome to the shop, guys. It is yard sale season, garage sale season, flea markets, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go over a couple tips on the best places to source these ax heads, uh, in my opinion. Um, and then once that's done, we'll get into uh, taking a look at this massive haul right here. I got 19 ax heads and I think 17 sledgehammer heads, a couple vices and some other stuff. So tip number one, old people, have old ax heads, generally speaking. When we're looking for places to find ax heads, we wanna look at old communities, okay? All right, number two, networking. When you're out hitting these yard sales and garage sales, there's other pickers and they are possibly picking ax heads. Um, they could be going after lanterns, car parts, who knows what. So network with those guys and then you can get some inside information. You could get, um, you know, possibly do some trades and stuff like that. All right, this is kind of tip number three um, and this is gonna be a little bit vague, but this is how I got most of what I have right here. I'm gonna say two words, scrap metal and I'm gonna leave it at that. All right, I may throw in a couple more tips as we go through this, but uh, right now let's let's check out this haul. All right, so right off the bat, we got a old Ford auto wrench. These are pretty cool, digging that. Um, got a, a Lufkin foldable ruler, but this one's a little, a little more unique to me. Um, oh couple couple little rulers you know or little uh, tape measures but this this guy right here is the first that I've ever had so it's a Lufkin but it's it's cloth it's not a metal tape and it looks like we're a couple inches short but uh that was pretty cool I was stoked on that just a little you know bench art all right so there's no manufacturer stamp on this, but uh, it does say made in Spain right there. A kind of a cool little caliper. I've been reading the caliper on a, a, a metric caliper lately. So, yeah, cool little caliper. All right, so I'm gonna show you, you guys may have seen the short, I just couldn't contain myself. I'm gonna show you one of the coolest ax heads that I have got. Um, so we're here in the Sierra Nevada mountains, right? Uh, huge logging history. The town I live in, uh, has been being logged and mined since the mid 1800s. And it's this guy right here. So there's no, there's no maker's mark on the ax head itself, but this is a log brand. So the logger that cut the tree down he'd stamped into the log with his brand so that when it got to the sawmill, uh, they could identify whose it was so he could get paid by it. So this, this was huge. This, at first when I saw it, I thought, oh man, some tweaker got a hold of this with a, a welder and messed something up. And, uh, and then I looked a little bit closer and realized what it was. So super excited about that piece. All right, I'm gonna start all the way over. Columbian bench, top vice i'm not sure if it's a knockoff but it does have some numbers so that's pretty cool ah oh, whammy smallest thumb pump oiler i've ever found it's a little corroded but i think it'll clean up got a couple other thumb pump oilers um a 2000 woodings verona hatchet uh nice little boys or a, a kid's youth hatchet real thin so I might be able to save that handle um this i think it might be the original handle but it's probably going to get scrapped and we can see here we've got b37 so this was you know true temper you guys know that true temper some on their wood slashers they would just put a paper label but that's a that's a true temper mark generally speaking um we got a custom handle here wow that's you know what? That might be part of a baseball bat, no? Oh, that might be a baseball bat. Um, yeah, Woodings Verona. Another 2000 or something like that. A couple little hammers. Um, 
a pretty good condition hatchet handle other than a really poor kerf cut into it but still a keeper uh, ooh ooh this guy right here let me get this all right all right so here we have just a straight up true temper so no flint edge kelly works no nothing straight up true temper and the the pole is in really good condition the whole axe head is in really good condition so that's a nice very nice piece i'm excited about that one um we've got i think this is a collins yeah collins brush axe um now this guy what's odd is that the maker's mark is on the opposite side that they normally are and i can't make it out you know two dollar axe head now we have here so at first when i saw this thing i thought that it was another true temper because of the red but this one's made in sweden you can see the blue in there so the, hard to say where it came uh, what forge it came from but uh, I don't know, probably a two and a half pound, you know, boy's axe. Unfortunately, the handle's a little crooked. Uh, I might save the handle, but the head's in good shape. Nice piece. All right. And then we've got another log brand, A5. And again, uh, no maker's mark on this. But looks like it's seen better days. Super short. What was that 24 inches maybe? So that's that's pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. Probably just hang them up. All right. Got another True Temper brush axe. That one's in pretty good shape. Pretty clean. All right. Very very unique. I don't. I don't think that's a Puget Sound um, or a knot clipper. I'm not sure. This is a second. Sometimes I forget what the what the patterns are called. There's just so many of them, but it's in pretty good shape. And I almost missed this one. This one was in a, a wheelbarrow full of water, right? So if you're ever out digging, looking, you know, hunting for axe heads, they're small, and when they're rusty, they're camouflage. You can miss them easy. So. Ooh, the the mark is is pretty faint. It's been rubbed rubbed off pretty good, but that's a, a zenith Marshall Wells chipped. So I don't know if this is a cruiser. It's definitely it's right almost nine inches, um, but these chips are odd to me. So that makes me think it's either cast or that's that's tempered. I'm not sure. Pretty neat. What is this? Oh, this is a Hubbard. I don't know what kind of. If anybody knows what kind of hammerhead that is, or if it's even a maul, I'm not sure. I imagine it's some sort of a rock hammer. Pretty heavy. I'd say it's five six pounds. So, couple of no name carpenters hatchets. This one's pitted pretty good eyes a little jacked but you know when you're picking them up for a dollar I don't know all right here we have a lakeside so I think if I remember correctly that's Montgomery Wards someone can correct me on that if I'm wrong um another just super pitted but the, there's still a lot of steel there the eyes in great shape the pole is in pretty good shape uh this was hanging on a fence you know just yard art so i was able to score that piece another hubbard wedge um, this is a really light uh about nine and a half inch ten inch double bit uh, no maker's marks might be a wood slasher i haven't haven't seen any small letters but we'll take a look at that 
another another doodad. There's a pretty good shape carpenter's carpenter's hatchet. Eh, maybe not. Eyes a little jacked on that one. All right, getting into this. These are some pretty cool pieces. So this one. At first I thought someone had just taken, you know, a hewing hatchet and cut it off. But then once I realize the perma bond is still in there. So this is a plum perma bond and the handle was pretty messed up. So yeah, single bevel. All right, single bevel. That's pretty cool. All right. And then a Baker hewing hatchet. All right, and here's a nice one. This one's in pretty, I, I almost missed this one too. This one was in the weeds. Um, a little, little plum boy's ax. Pulls in pretty good shape. It's not terrible. Could be cleaned up without uh, really knowing that much was done to it. All right, let's, let's move that way. All right, guys, so I've started to collect a lot of the, the sledgehammers. So I see them out there. Um, and, you know, when you're out searching for axe heads and you can't find any axe heads, you know, I start picking up other things and whatnot. And I've been passing up a lot on the, the sledgehammers. But, um, you know, a brand new sledgehammer today is like, you know, for what, a 10 pounder is like 150 bucks. So I started picking them up. It's a little Woodings Verona. Um, this was an odd piece. I'm not sure, again, if that was, I think this says Iron City on it or Hubbard. Yeah, it's either a Hubbard, either a Hubbard or an Iron City. So, I don't know, maybe five pounds, three, four pounds. I don't know, you know, when you pick them up for a buck, right? All right. So these are firsts for me and I scored two of them. Um, and that's, that's, ex that's cool. Um, right. So these are railroad hammers for driving railroad spikes. So I got two of these bad dogs. Yeah. This one, let's see here. I can't. A.S. Simon, eight pound. So, huh. Um, Iron City. I don't know much about Iron City, but um, I do like the Nevada patterns. And that's a sweet little hammer. I think that one's Japanese made. Ooh, this one's, this one's pretty pretty slick it's a German with a crown on it All right eight pound German let's say head made in Germany so I don't know this might be after uh, the Soviets because a lot of the time on tools I'll see they'll say head made in West Germany to uh, to let everybody know that it wasn't occupied Germany. So that's cool. Got two of these. Another one right there. Another Woodings Verona. Um, where to go next? Oh, I'll show you that in just a second. That that is a beast. That is that's pretty intense. Little tiny picks. So I've been passing up on big picks for a long time, um, but these are just little tiny. You know, like maybe three pounds. And this. Obviously was a pick hammer of sorts. So it's pretty pitted. It's pretty old. I don't know. I don't know much about it, but we'll do some digging on that. All right. I'm not sure if that's actually an ads. 
Got a couple, couple little tiny picks again. What does this one say? This one. Oh, it's got a bunch of letters in it. All right, that's pretty cool. J.A. Sutherland. Nice. So, like I said, I don't know much about the picks, but I've been picking them up lately. A Mondo hammer. This thing's a tank. Is that a straight pin? That thing's... That's got to be 12 pounds. Another pick... I don't think there's any marks on that guy. All right. And a hand crank grinder. And listen to this. Pretty smooth, right? So, I haven't dug around to see any marks on it. Uh, so, it might, you know, might only be from the 50s or something. I'm not sure. This is a Craftsman head got a, a Pepsi box now this guy now this is a legitimate question I'm not just fishing for someone to get into the comment section what the heck is this it appears to be the same size eye as a sledgehammer and it appears to be 10 pounds and it certainly looks, oh yeah, so it's got W-N. Certainly looks like, I don't know, like some sort of hammerhead. I'm assuming to pound big wooden stakes or something. I'm not sure. But it's got, I'm not sure if those are cast marks in them on each side or if someone was just kept pounding on that. So I probably won't put a handle on this. And I think it'll just sit on the bench, right? And maybe use it as kind of like an anvil or something. You know, clean it up, of course. Looks like it's got some concrete on it. All right. This sucker. It is. It is the Titan. This, I'm not sure, I've came, been coming across uh, metal uh, felling wedges for loggers, you know, because they used to use metal, magnesium, steel, aluminum. Um, I see a lot of steel ones around. So this, I'm not sure if this was, man, that's got to be, it's got to be eight inches right there, 10 inches. So pretty sweet piece, yet pointless to have other than, you know, decoration. All right, and then... This guy. So that's probably a three, three and a half foot, one and a half man. And it's a, I believe it's a, oh. Guaranteed superior. And then it's got CA stamped in it. So this thing's in great shape. It's straight as an arrow. The teeth are probably sharp enough to cut right now only problem needs a handle so but that that's really not even a problem i'll be able to get that figured out so i'm excited about this oh i forgot the vice so a lakeside 27 um and it looks like the uh beneath the jaws here have been chipped on a couple sides but other than that, it operates pretty smooth. Um, the top's not all messed up, not super jacked. Still rotates, um, goes in and out. So yeah, pretty sweet little piece. Couldn't pass that up. The guy had like 10 more vices out there. Um, one looked like it to be 200 pounds. So I'm gonna make another trip out there, of course. And I know I left ax heads on the ground out there. I could just sense it. Forgot this also. So if anyone knows what this is, um, 
right? It says, Admiral, pretty slick, pretty slick. Man, I've never had so many nails in all of these heads. I destroyed a bandsaw blade cutting off some of these. So yeah, that's gotta be five pounds, right? That's a pretty neat piece. All right, so those of you guys have made it this far, um, I'm gonna go over a couple more tips, okay? So number one, network. Okay, if you're hitting estate sales, yard sales and stuff, you're gonna see the same faces. And those people are looking for specific things that they collect or that they resell, okay? So uh, network with those people. They don't, you know, the, a lot of those guys, they don't want ax heads. They may be looking for car parts. They may be looking for lanterns, you don't know. So network with those people um, and don't be afraid to hand out your phone number and get their phone number. Um, number two, when you're at an estate sale, especially estate sales where you have free range of the, the house and the property to dig and look, don't be afraid to get on your knees and look under that workbench, right? Um, go out, find, see if there's a wood pile, right? Uh, go out around the side of the house. You know, we're looking for handles sticking up and an ax might be in there. A lot of times just an ax head. You might have to scrape, I, I, I almost missed one. All I saw was that much of it and it was an old true temper, um, and all I saw, I knew it was metal and I scraped it away, found it, right? Um, and then do your research and do your planning. If you're lining up a Friday, oh, let's get on this subject, Fridays. A lot, at least around where I'm at, a lot of these estate sales and yard sales, they start on Friday mornings at eight o'clock in the morning, okay? So if you have the ability to do so, that's when you're gonna get the best pick of what's out there. Because guys like me are out there on Friday mornings and, and they've done their research, they've found the neighborhoods that they want to go pick in and, and they're on it. And I'm sitting there 15 minutes early, 30 minutes early. I'm sitting and waiting and watching. Um, so Fridays, 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 Fridays. Um, I forget where I was going with the Friday thing. Um, but uh, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll edit it in if I figure it out. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to get down on your knees, get down on your hands, you know, look around. I'm gonna start wearing gloves. Um, a lot of the time, you, you know, you get into a garage, weird oils, it's good. So maybe bring some of that, bring a flashlight, okay? Um, I found some really cool stuff behind workbenches, underneath workbenches that have probably been sitting there for 40 years since that workbench was built. Someone dropped something down there and boom, pull it right out. Um, and then furthermore, kind of goes with that networking side of things. If you start coming across stuff that, that you have no interest in, right? You're not into wrenches, um, pick them up. One of those guys you're networking with that you may, or one of those guys that you haven't even met yet may be into those old Ford wrenches. So then when you do meet them, you can say, oh, well, I've got all this trade material set to the side. You know, I've got the vices, the wrenches and, um, you know, glass bottles, whatever it may be. So if you can pick them up cheap, you know, do that. Uh, don't discount the pile technique, the whole lot. You just, just start putting it in there, okay? Um, and then, you know, don't show too much interest in one specific thing. A lot of the time you show that interest and they're like, oh, well, if that one's worth $20 to you, they're all worth 20. So, so that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you have any, um, any knowledge to, to add to it, put that in the comment section. Uh, if you've made it this far and, and you're not subscribed, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps the channel out. Um, thumbs up, share all that stuff. You guys know the drill. Um, we're growing the channel and, uh, and I want it to be, a knowledgeable uh, source of information about all these vintage tools. It's important. We need to, you know, there's a lot of them out there, but we need to save them. That's how I feel. So hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.